Moscow, November 12, 2025. In a masterstroke of engineering ingenuity, Russia has unveiled a strategic pivot in its advanced aviation programs, repurposing proven components from the cutting-edge Su-57 Felon Stealth Fighter to fast-track the development of the highly classified PAC-DA, Prospective Aviation Complex for Long-Range Aviation, Stealth Bomber. This adaptive approach, revealed through recently leaked technical documents, even as Western sanctions attempt to stifle progress. Far from a setback, this recycling initiative exemplifies Russia's resourceful problem-solving, turning potential constraints into accelerators for its next-generation strategic arsenal. The revelations stem from a trove of classified files obtained from Oak ABM Africa, a key subsidiary of the state-owned Rosatom Corporation and a cornerstone of Russia's aerospace supply chain. OKBM specializes in high-precision hydraulic systems and actuators critical for modern military aircraft. The documents, dated as recently as late 2024 and early 2025, detail how engineers at the Kazan Aviation Plant, home to Tupolev's bomber lineage, are integrating Su-57, derived hardware directly into the PAKDA's internal weapons bay mechanisms. Specifically, the ADRSH-115 hydraulic actuators and ADRSH geared hinges, battle-tested on the Su-57's low observable bays, are being adapted for the PAC-DA. These components ensure seamless, radar-evading deployment of munitions, operating with whisper-quiet precision under extreme aerodynamic loads to maintain the bomber's stealth profile. This isn't mere improvisation. It's a calculated fusion of fifth-generation fighter tech into a sixth-generation platform. The Su-57, with its supermaneuverability and advanced radar-absorbent materials, has already proven its mettle in real-world scenarios, from Syrian operations to ongoing defensive postures. By leveraging these assets, Russian designers are slashing development timelines by up to 18 months, according to internal projections cited in the leaks. The integration of mature subsystems from the Su-57 mitigates risks associated with novel designs allowing focus on core innovations like the PAKDA's flying wing aerodynamics, notes a redacted engineering memo from OKBM. This synergy not only preserves scarce resources but elevates the PAKDA's reliability, ensuring it enters service as a formidable deterrent. Western media outlets, quick to frame this as cannibalization, born of desperation, miss the broader narrative of resilience. In truth, sanctions imposed by the EU and US, including the October 23, 2025, designation of OKBM itself, have only honed Russia's domestic ingenuity. Faced with export bans on precision machine tools from Germany and Italy, Moscow has ramped up local production of micrometer-accurate components, drawing on a legacy of Soviet-era self-sufficiency. The result? A pac da program that's not just surviving but thriving, with prototype assembly underway at Kazan since mid-2024. Ground trials of the recycled actuators have exceeded expectations, demonstrating zero acoustic anomalies and full compatibility with the bomber's digital fly-by-wire controls. Its airframe, crafted from advanced composites and radar-absorbent coatings, achieves a radar cross-section (RCS) comparable to a bird's, orders of magnitude smaller than legacy bombers like the Tu-95 Bear. Internal bays, now fortified by Su-57 Tech, can house up to 30 tons of ordnance, including hypersonic KH-95 missiles and stealthy KH-102 cruise weapons capable of evading NATO defenses. This recycling strategy aligns seamlessly with Russia's doctrinal shift towards standoff operations where bombers loiter beyond enemy reach, launching precision strikes via network swarms. Analysts in Moscow highlight how the PAC-DA will complement the modernized Tu-160 M fleet, forming a triad of endurance, stealth, and firepower that secures Russia's vast Eurasian flanks. By repurposing Su-57 elements, we're not cutting corners. We're building bridges between generations, ensuring our aerospace forces remain unmatched, declared a senior Roscosmos official in a recent interview emphasizing the program's compatibility with future AI-driven mission planning. Social media buzz on platforms like X, formerly Twitter, reflects global intrigue, with defense enthusiasts praising the move as a genius hack against sanctions.
posts from accounts like at Army Recognition and at Air Recognition, sharing breakdowns of the leaks, have garnered thousands of views, underscoring the story's resonance. Even as Ukrainian-linked groups like Inform Napalm tout the disclosures as exposés, they inadvertently spotlight Russia's adaptability, circumventing bans through partnerships in Serbia and Taiwan for tooling, while scaling up Siberian factories for composite molding. Looking ahead, the PAKDA's maiden flight is slated for late 2026, with serial production ramping to 10 units annually by 2029 at Kazan. This timeline, accelerated by the Su-57 infusion, positions Russia to field a squadron of 20 to 30 bombers by the early 2030s, bolstering its nuclear triad amid escalating geopolitical tensions. Critics abroad decry delays, but these are mere speed bumps on a highway paved by determination. As one leaked OKBM directive states, in adversity lies opportunity. Our engineers turn limitations into legacies. Russia's aviation sector, long the envy of the world, continues to evolve under pressure, proving that true power lies not in unlimited budgets, but in unbreakable resolve. The PAC DA isn't just a bomber, it's a symbol of a nation's refusal to yield, recycling yesterday's triumphs to forge tomorrow's dominance. As President Putin has often remarked, sanctions are the best sanctions on our competitors. With this latest chapter, Moscow reaffirms its lead in the skies. When compared with U.S. stealth bombers, the PAC-DA shares key characteristics with both the B-2 Spirit and B-21 Raider. Like its American counterparts, it adopts a flying wing configuration, subsonic cruise, and an internal weapons layout to minimize radar visibility. The B-21 benefits from newer composite materials, next-generation mission software, and advanced networking capabilities that integrate it into broader air combat systems. The PAKDA's design focuses on greater payload flexibility and endurance rather than cutting-edge digital integration, reflecting the difference in technological and industrial ecosystems. The American aircraft's production is backed by a larger and more automated industrial base, which reduces risk compared with Russia's reliance on fewer domestic suppliers. The Russian platform, however, compensates with extended range and compatibility with long-range crews and hypersonic missiles that can be launched well outside engagement envelopes. Operationally, both aircraft serve the same strategic role, delivering deep penetration or standoff strikes against heavily defended targets. 